Hello, Neil here, and welcome to another video. In this video, I'm going to ask the question, what are the alternatives to Kubernetes? But first, what is Kubernetes? Well, it's a system for running containers. And when I say a system, I mean like a complete cloud solution. It's made up of several components. We have a cloud component that looks after all the controllers and things. Then you've got the ingress components, this is a gateway into your system so that if you're hosting web services, then the outside world can see what's on the containers. Then we have the other two components being the scheduler, very important component. This is where it decides where the workload should work on your cloud resources. And the final component is the data. Where Kubernetes stores all of its state so it knows what's running where how long it's running for, how many instances you should be running each bit and how long or whatever it needs to know about that service. So a quick overview of what it looks like. We've got the compute resource on the right hand side of your screen there, the nodes. This is where the containers actually run. This is what the scheduler is doing. It's picking the workload and it's tying it up with the node that will run that particular container. We've then got the deployments, which is a sort of virtual state of affairs. It's a thing where it's a collection of configuration. Essentially, it says this is the images I want to run. This is how many of those I want to run or replicas and any other information it needs with it, like attached volumes, data, network connectivity, host names, all that sort of stuff. All those get put together in a deployment. Then we've got a service. A service sits on top of a deployment and that is closely tied with the ingress gateways. Quite often the service will define a host name or a port and then that will also define how it connects into the deployments, providing that link between the two. So for us to have an alternative to Kubernetes, it must be able to give us ingress gateways must be able to give us a scheduler of some sort. We must also have a controller so that we can talk to the system in order to instruct what it's going to do. And we must have nodes, whether it's looking after them or we're looking after them. And this is where the work actually gets done. So with no further ado, here's five alternatives to Kubernetes. Number one is AWS ECS, Elastic Container Service. This is a backplane type service that Amazon will provide to you and it gives you the following facilities. It gives you the ability to specify an ingress, although this also is another Amazon product that be in the load balancer. ECS will handle the internal plumbing, if you will, between the load balancer and the actual containers that are running the workloads. It also provides the scheduler. If you're looking for a serverless approach, then Fargate can be specified as a destination, in which case your containers will run upon the Fargate service that Amazon also provide. The alternative for that is EC2, where you're providing your own individual nodes, in which case the scheduler will then decide on which node is best. Cloud Foundry platform as a service. This also relies on the cloud provider to provide the ingress service. So the load balancers. If you're hosting on AWS, this would be the AWS load balancers that I just mentioned. It also has a controller plane so that it understands what it's supposed to be running and a scheduler in order to schedule those tasks out onto the nodes that is specified. The nodes are managed by Bosch, which is an internal management system that Cloud Foundry run. This does mean you have to manage your own instances. You'll have to, if you're running it in AWS or any other cloud provider, a droplet, for instance, then it would have to be given over to configuration to Bosch and then Bosch will manage it from there. Apache Mesos. The Mesos project has been around a long time, almost as long as ECS. It enables you to run containers as well as any executable. In fact, you can define schedulers yourself or use the built in scheduler and it provides the control plane that happily sits upon ETCD like uh, Kubernetes does. Everything, however, is managed by you. You have to provide the nodes for the control plane, preferably three of them if you want to be fault tolerant. 
and you have to provide the nodes that run the actual workloads. And these nodes can be tagged with various facilities. This is useful for the scheduler to help it decide where it should run the workload. And as I mentioned already, you can provide your own custom schedulers. You can do that in Kubernetes too, but it's also a feature of this. Mirantis, or whatever you want to call it, is the new name for Docker EE Enterprise Solution. Or if you go back a long way, then it's the new name for Docker Swarm. Docker Swarm provides a way of grouping a number of machines together, similar to the nodes, but they will also run the control plane and the nodes and the scheduler and the controller all together. It's driven primarily by a command line, but there is an, uh, an API interface that you can stick on top of that. Again, everything is managed by you. You need to provide the node resources, whether they're virtual or physical, and configure them along with the clients. And the last one on our list is OKD. This is the upstream project for OpenShift, the open source version, if you will. This is, in effect, a management layer on top of Kubernetes itself. So it's all open source, it's all Kubernetes under the hood, but it provides an extra number of helpers like the cloud controller. The main difference here is that the nodes that you have to provide and manage are running core OS. The rather cut down version specified just for running Docker and does little else. It makes it very good at this task. Everything else is handled through an API or command line and it always has to be set up by you. If you do want the support option, then obviously that comes with dollars. So that's my list. Let me know in the comments below which one you prefer or which one you've heard of or tried. I'd really appreciate the feedback. And if you want to know about any more of them, tell me in the comments as well, and I'll do further videos explaining the differences. Till next time.